I'm Chef Gloria Cabral and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be working on gingerbread houses. This is a time of year where all those wonderful smells, all the great cooking and baking and family and friends get together. So we thought of this wonderful project to make as a gingerbread house. A nice one for the house that we can decorate with the kids. So let's start this. What we're going to do is we're going to take some shortening and, sh and sugar and we're going to cream that. Creaming means you're going to add it and you're going to beat it until it gets light and fluffy. It helps with the texture of the cookie crumbs. There we go. When you're doing this process, these cookies are made for gingerbread houses. So they're not going to spread a lot, but they're going to have a nice uh, crunch and a hold to it, and that's what you want. You don't want to have all these distortions in your baking. So what I try to do is make it nice and light and fluffy. When I, then I take my flour, my ginger, salt, and cinnamon, and I just kind of mix it in a little bit together here. So it's all incorporated together. Here we have molasses and corn syrup, and I want to add that to my sugars and beat it a little bit more to help so it holds all my pieces together. Ah, molasses, what a wonderful smell. Scrape down the sides of your bowl always so it incorporates all your sugars and your fats together so you don't have all kinds of lumps inside your dough. Then I will add my dry ingredients which I showed you I just, this is like a quick sifting so they all are together. Okay, I'll mix half at a time so it doesn't get all over the place because, boy, they, they'll puff up a little bit. Then I'll throw the other half in. The recipe will be online if you'd like to. Just email me. It's a very simple recipe, just a little bit of water to hold it together. If it seems a little dry, you add just a little bit more water, but not too much so it doesn't get all bubbly, because what will happen, it'll get bubbles when it's baking. There we go, nice and easy. See, I kind of mix it, I don't like to mix it too much because it gets too hard. So I can just finish a lot of this right on the table. See, nice and soft, absolutely wonderful smell. I've used this for people who can't have eggs in a cookie. What I do is I make it a little bit thick and underbake it so they can eat this as a cookie. Uh, I'm using a mold today. You can roll these out, cut them in any shapes. If you look on, online or on websites and different places, you can find a million different types of gingerbread house patterns. But I found working with smaller children, I try to find something simple and cute that they can work with. So what I tend to do is just take a little bit of my dough and sprinkle a little bit of flour on it so I can pull it out. And I just press it in. 
When you're working with older kids, they will it's e they can do this themselves. And they're just pressing it in piece by piece. And sometimes you can just roll right on top to get that extra. I roll from the middle and I work my way out. If it's too big, just take a little knife and just scrape off your edges. You can constantly reuse this dough. It goes back in because even though you work it a lot, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to eat it. It's going to be something that's going to be put out there. So then carefully. I will peel it out. I want to make sure my sides are nice and straight. And on this one, I have to make two of the same pat, two of the same this one and whatever else I choose. This one has a chimney, but not all the time I put a chimney in it. I'll show you this one more time and I'll do the front of the house because I've already pre-planned this. The more you work with your dough, the more it's going to get uh, a little bit darker color. You'll see the darker one that we have later because I've used that dough quite a few times. Just a little bit of flour to help it come out. See, this would be a great with your teenagers. So many times I feel people will say, oh, I've never made one at home when I was younger. Um, a lot of people haven't because of, you know, time restraints and what people are doing. This time I used a bigger knife. It gives me a little bit more of a straighter edge across the whole piece. See? And I'll pull this out carefully. And it falls right out. Whatever design it stays in, if it's crooked, it's going to stay crooked. So you just always want to make sure your edges are all nice and straight. Very, very simple. Now move this out of the way. You can make your dough a week or two ahead of time. You can even freeze it if you have a chance like a month or two ahead of time, that's fine. And I cut out all my pieces that I need. And I says, oh, some of them should I put windows, put I, you know, I can have just like this and cover it with icing. But I like to fill them with candy. When you're baking candy into a gingerbread house, you have to bake your gingerbread house first, almost all the way, just with a few more minutes left, and then you put your candy in, because if not, what will happen is your candy will burn, because the candy doesn't take that long. When you're choosing candy, you try to choose hard candies. I don't use chocolate, because chocolate tends to, you know, if it sits out for a while, um, will get no, not too good. I'll feed this when I'm done at the end of the year or at Christ, after Christmas. I feed it to the birds. So I don't want any puppies or dogs or cats eating anything if, if they're outside because chocolate isn't good for that. Some people save them for years and years. And that works out fine. If you want, you know, if you want to do that, you have to polyurethane it and spray it. If I'm doing these for a display, I know people are not going to eat it. So what I tend to do is after I bake them and put my sugar in it, I'll spray them all with a light polyurethane spray. Then I put my, my royal icing on top. What that does, it stops the, the gingerbread from sucking in the moisture. And if you notice on sometimes when you do these houses, and this time I'm not going to do a chimney. So I'll take this out. What it does, it stops them because sometimes the house is after a while, the sugar falls off, and you don't want to have hap that happen to your house. So I'll spray them, but then I, at the after I'm done with it, I tell people just throw the house away and do it that way. They have edible sprays that you can do, and um, again, I'm just doing this for fun, and I, and I tell the kids, let's just do it for fun. And I always try to have them make separate cookies so they could eat, because a lot of times they like to eat while they're working with it. You give them the royal icing decoration bag and they're eating it and playing with it. It's like, no, no, no. Or they have as much candy on the stum in their stomachs as they do on the cakes. And you know what I mean, because I know I like the jelly candies myself and the little peppermint ones. Okay, so I cut out where I'm going to fill it with candy and sugar and I'm going to bake these. See, the house has little indentations. When you're working with just plain dough, even if you're rolling it out, you can make little indentations with the back end of a knife, with little stamps, with cookie cutters, any kind of imprints. 
and they stay in this dough. Normally they won't stay in a regular cookie dough because of all the eggs, makes it softer and everything else. Now I'm gonna bake this off and then when it's almost done, we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, let's see how our cookies are doing. Very nice. If they get a little bubble like this, what I tend to do is just kind of carefully push out the air and so it makes it flat again. And see, while my pan's hot, I'm gonna add my candies. I'm not even gonna crush these. Some of these I'll crush and some I'll just let melt in the windows. Let's put in, let's see, let's make this door and I save some of these and I crushed them in green. I can put whatever color because you know, you're only limited by your imagination. There's all different types of the hard sour balls, the cinnamon heart can, I mean, anything that's hard and sugary would work perfectly in this. And I fill them a little bit higher. It's all right if they leak over to the sides. Just go to watch the edges of these pans, they're hot. And what this will do is have a nice slow um, melting to it. Okay, let's put one in this window. Oh, it looks like it's going to need more. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit. And then I'll put one on top so that'll melt nicely. I've seen them done with pretty colors of reds and yellows. Stained glass churches, they do all, they break all the colors separately and then they put them in carefully. Those are beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna put this back inside and I'll bring out our other ones. While the cookies are finishing in the oven and they're just melting, I don't wanna cook them because they're already cooked. I just wanna melt the sugar on it. I'm gonna start with the royal icing. And the royal icing is the glue that holds the houses together. It's the decorations. A lot of times I'll make the decorations beforehand because I don't wanna spend a lot of money on the candies. So I will show you how easy. Many recipes, they'll say add cream of tartar, egg whites, and sugar. I tend to, where I make it so much, I just add sugar and egg whites. Cream of tartar helps in it, but we try to make it easy. And I don't have I don't have a specific recipe. I do it by sight for what I'm looking for. So I fill about half of my bowl because I know how much I have to make with confectionery sugar. And if you sift it, if it's lumpy, make sure you sift it. You want it nice and light and fluffy. And using the whip, because you're making, a, this is like a meringue, because a meringue is basically egg whites and sugar. But we're making a very heavy meringue, very thick. And we let it, I like to sit it and I put it on the machine and I'll put just enough. And what I do is I add my egg whites. I buy pasteurized egg whites from the store. So this way if kids are eating it, they won't get sick with it. And I make it look like frosting. So I'll show you what it looks like. And then after it looks like a frosting, then I leave it on the machine to keep whipping so it's nice and light and fluffy. Just slowly adding it in. See, it's a little, if it's a little wet like that, I can always adjust and adding more or less of egg whites. So just looking at this, I'm just gonna add a little bit more confectionery sugar. And it has like the consistency of frosting. And I'm gonna put it on the machine for about 15 minutes. When you get it to where you want it, just put it on high, and this way it'll just keep getting lighter. If you look, the it's very soft, and it melts right inside. When it's all broken up, you get these nice little pieces in here, and the big one will sit there. While the royal icing is being made, this will cool just enough that we can start decorating it. Make sure when you get you, you choose your decorations as how you're gonna use this. Uh, what you wanna have an idea, again, look. Look around and how we can make things. 
All right, boy, that's loud, that machine, after a while. You can see it's nice and soft, and as it goes around, we have these little peaks, so you know you're pretty well ready where you want it to be nice and light and fluffy. I usually wait till, you know, I might sometimes throw it in the wash right away because it gets hard. Again, this is like cement. Once this hardens up, it's hard to clean off, so a lot of times you have to do soaking with it. So we'll just put it aside for a few minutes. If not, I'm gonna throw it in there. What I like to do, see, nice and thick, make some colors. Here I did some practicing, and I'll show you how to make them with different colors. I did purple for this house. Uh, usually I do some red and green, just to have some extra color around. Because I, I try to avoid buying a lot of candy to make gingerbread houses, because I don't need to eat it. And then when it's around, I will eat it. Okay, we have one for red, one for green, and one for white. You make it, like I said, you can make it any color you want. You can add what you want for decorations. I do a few different decorations. Now my, see, it's nice and cool. I can carefully pick up all my pieces and I can work on. If I'm working on these by myself, I like to work on them flat so I have more room to work with. Uh, I, it's easier to pipe straight up and down than if you have to pipe on a wall. But with kids, I like to glue them all together so they're hard because if they're pushing on them, it makes it a little bit more difficult. With your extra, you always want to keep covered with plastic wrap because if not, it's going to get hard and crusty. So you want to make sure, I'm just going to cover it right now with a, my damp cloth to keep that moisture in there. See, now we have a couple different colors. And you can get just plain food coloring. I choose Kelly Green for my green because it's nice and bright. Sometimes I'll use what they call forest green or moss green, depending on if I'm trying to go more Victorian, a Wedgwood blue. So it all depends on the theme. In my house, theme is and try to be indestructible because we have kids. You can make them marble just by swirling it a little bit or all one color. If you want to make it bright, add more if you don't. It's up to you. See, I've, I've gone with, I'm gonna leave it a little bit marbled, and I'm gonna take my red. Again, I use red red is a bright red color, but I can make it lighter, because you know, sometimes little girls like to work with these, and they are green, you know, they like the light pink. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna go maybe a little bit lighter this time. We'll see what this color comes out. Christmas red, if you get it, the color Christmas red, it's more of an orangey color, which is a little bit, too orange for me. Ah, I like this nice pink. My niece will love to see this at Christmas time. There we go. And what I do is I put these couplers, and we use these for cake decorating. And what happens, we, we put the coupler in. This way, if I want to change my different tip, it'll be so much easier than having a whole bunch of different bags. And we use one bag of one color, one bag of another color. And I just fill them in. Again, watch, you know, you gotta know who you're working with. Now, if I work with children later, what I usually do is I take my, my bag and I push all my royal icing down the bottom, nice and tight. And later when I do this, I'll do it. I twist it really tight and I put tape or an elastic because when the kids tend to squish up, it goes up, out, on the floor, they giggle, laugh, they don't care, and then later you're sitting there like, why did I do this? So you try to make things easier for you later so you'll want to do it again. And you did it because that funny little giggling face is so adorable. And it's like childbirth, later on you forget the pain. <laughs> so we've done, my niece started making gingerbread houses when she's three. Now that she's 12, she makes them much more elaborate. And when she started school, they're all making around these, uh, they would make gingerbread houses using the graham cracker cookies on a milk carton. A lot of people may remember those. And she's like, this isn't a gingerbread house when hers is about this big and all kinds of candy around, which made it fun. But it makes a memory. And this is what we try to do at Christmas time is to make memories. You know, you can give a gift. A gift is as, as much fun as it is just opening up the gift. You know, I, could, I used to say with my kids, I could give them empty boxes. They just wanted to open up the package. But when you give them a memory, that lasts forever. So these are memories you want to give. Okay, 
on the green one, I put a leaf tip and it looks like a W and that'll give me a little leaf tip on, on my pictures here. I'm going to do the dot for the red. Again, I may change it later. And I'll put the back the covers. And this one's a star tip, so I keep that close at hand. And this is for gluing or anything extra. So I'm not gonna cut, I have a little, but I'm not gonna do much of anything. That'll be gluing the houses later. Then I have to look. Let's put them all in the direction that we're gonna work with. So this is the bottom of my house. This is my door, my roof. Uh, these little, it's a little mailbox and a little Christmas tree. And the front of the house. You might say I'm not gonna do the chimney because the chimney on this patent covers one of the doors, so I, I like the window instead. So I says, hmm, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make a wreath around my window. So easiest way is to figure a wreath is round. So let's start with a round spot. So it gives me an idea where I'm gonna go. And then I just add a bunch of leaves. Oh, my nose runs after I had all these wonderful smells in here. See, very simple. I'll add a few little berries. We have our little holly berries, our cranberries. Cranberry is one of my favorite flavors. Do the wreath over here. See, you can create swags. Think of how you would like your house decorated outside. We have wreaths around our house and our little statues of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, because that's my time of the year. Christmas, like everybody knows around here, it is my favorite time. I start playing Christmas just about the time of Thanksgiving, which they tell me it's too early. See, simple, really, really simple on that. Okay, very simple on making the wreath. The tree is gonna be very simple also. Just all I'm doing is taking this pattern and going back and forth, pulling it out. I can put sprinkles, I can put different things. And I'm showing you how to do this house, but I have one that's already dried, so you can see different things on that. If I wanna put little cherries, in, oh, cherries, cranberries, berries, I can do different colors so I can make Christmas lights. And I'm like, hmm, this looks nice, but I think I'm gonna do like a window box or a swag. So basically it's all my greens will be coming down. And I can do them any which way because it's my house. And I love that because that's that little power thing, you know? My house looks like that. Someone else's house will look a little different. And that's what makes them so special. Let's put a nice pretty candle in the window. Just by piping it straight. Um, see, I'm only using the two tips. If I have different colors, I could do them different ways. And maybe later I'll put a little dot of something. Or I'll put a little green leaf right up here. And you could put a little candy right, now. I'll have other candies later to put in the windows. So I can decorate, let's decorate my little mailbox so everybody knows to deliver all those wonderful Christmas cards. And I know people send them over the internet, not the same. I love getting my Christmas cards from my friends. So they can have a nice little mailbox, a little green to it. Because you always have greens, you have your princess pine and different pines. Now I'm going to let this harden so I can finish it later. What I choose to do a lot of times is make my decorations ahead so they're harder. So you can choose different things as candy canes and pretzels. And So what I do with the pretzels, I take two or three because if I try to make a whole fence, trying to pick it up, it tends to break. So I try to make, I'll make little pieces at a time that I can build my fence. Well, maybe we'll go this way. And give it a look that you want to do and decide how you want it. The garland, and that's what will be our swag along the edge. So I always start on how I want it to look. And that gives it a little holding base to it. And then after that, I'm just gonna add my leaves. See, 
See, nice and simple, really easy. Add a few little berries. And it doesn't take long. I do it one night, the next night, you can, next day you can peel it off. I made the purple ones last night. So now, I can just put these into my house and they hold up really well. If you want to do long garland swags, I start with the same basic thing. And this got hard, so I can work right on that. When I tried to move these too early, they broke, so I'm not worried about that at all. So I'll just come back with a little bit more green and let it get hard. So you just do the same thing, put your leaves. That's pretty good, it's almost the same color as I did last night. Sometimes I'll do two or three different shades of green. So this way it has a little contrast. I'll do some thicker, some thinner, different types of tips because it gives you that wonderful look of what the foliage is. So here I have a little bit, add a little green in there to hold my pieces together. And when these harden, I can just add them to my house across the roof, different areas. To make sure they fit, they fit. And I add just a little extra. We like the little extra love because this way it shows that you took pride in what you did. We found these cute little rice paper trees. I think they were made in Germany and they're completely edible. So we'll add those in. Add a few little leftover candies from Halloween that can be used anytime you want. And they add, I always try to look for leftover Halloween candy because sometimes they come some great ideas and I'll figure out how I can use that to save on my money and my costs, especially if you have a lot of people you want to do these for. I took the little snowman and we'll do those later. Um, and all I did is put royal icing. I put a little purple hat on him and I added to his scarf. He's got his little candy cane. If I want to add a little bit of dots, see? Sometimes I do these at Easter on chocolate bunnies. So you buy the little chocolate bunnies or the eggs and I decorate them up because it makes it a little bit more special. This was just simple to make like a little post. If I wanted to put my mailbox or something on the post, all I did was pipe a little frost of the royal icing underneath, stick it in, and I piped all around it with green or white. And here's the mailbox. To get a little fancy, I was just taking some a piping tip and piping. Little decorations. And in many books, you can find similar decorations and make up the same one over and over again. As simple as that. Okay, so I'm, I made a bunch of these and I piped them and I put them aside to dry so I can use them later. Last night when I was doing that, I was choosing you know different things, so I decorated my little house with just a little bit of purple as a different change. So I'll have a pink house and a purple house. And I take bases to put them on. What I usually do is take cardboard and tape it together, two different sides, and I just put aluminum foil. Something very simple, because most of it will be covered with white frosting. And I just bring it to the back, nice and tight, and I'm turning it as I'm going. And this way it's easy to throw away later. You can put them on a nice plate. Depending on how much work you do on your house, you want to be very specific with it. And what I try to do is I try to say, oh, how's my house going to fit? What I do is I glue, I decide which is the front and the sides. And these sides will have the royal icing, see, nice and thick. And I will add my house pieces slowly to it. Do the same thing, make sure you know which way your top and bottom, because if you put them upside down, it's gonna look a little strange, but it's all right, it's your house. Some things in my house look very strange too, trust me. And I just put them together, try to make them look the best I can. I don't worry about that little white there because that's where my snow drifts are. So I come across make big old fat snow drifts because you never know where a gutter works. This house doesn't have gutters, whoops, so it falls down. That's okay, we just stick it back together. See, nice and easy. My front door is here. So a lot of times I'll just add in a little 
a little bit of snow here. And others, another later, we'll show you some other decorations. Something very simple. You can flood it by taking more of the egg whites and make it a little bit softer and it pours on so it gives it a nice smoother finish. What I like doing is just adding. My back door, nobody comes in so we don't care about it. Nice and easy. And what I do is I let this harden and I'll put my roof on. And I just add a little bit into my roof, but if I'm in a rush, a lot of times I'll just put my glue here and I'll tape, put this down and put tape on it to hold it tight. So it's like having an extra hand so it gets hard. This is basically, and we're gonna do some more decorating on this house later, but I have some guests who are gonna come help me. So what I did with their houses is I glued the whole thing together and I want them to start decorating it from there. And this is the fun part of having kids. Uh, come in and do their creative aspect of it. So let me get this all clean and set up for my guests. We'll be right back. Mark! Anna! Ah! 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 Woo! Hey! Hey! We got your lunch. Hey! Hey! Oh! You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. I present to you Algebra 2. Foreign languages. And finally, biology. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Yeah, I'll do it. Me too. Sign me Take up. on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Pants, pants, pants. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. Here we go. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. All right, so my friends CJ, Skyler, and Papa came to visit and we're gonna do the rest of our gingerbread houses. And Mama's over there. <laughs> yeah, Mama's over there too. So what we did, I made sure the house was already hard and sturdy. So I wanted to make sure all my royal icing so now they can do that. So we're gonna show you just quickly decorating house. I'm gonna put some frosting right on my house really fast. And if I wanna put shingles, I can squish on. Hey, I can't really get You can't? Oh, see the elastic's on? Go squeeze with me. Come on, a little squeeze. So we squeeze down, oh. and you go, oh, that's because it got a little hard. Sometimes it gets a little hard, and we just squeeze, see? Yeah. There you go, so two hands, squeeze it on. And you can just stick on little crackers, cereals for the top of the roof. I tend to make mine a little bit more Overlapping because I don't want my roof to leak in case of a rainstorm. See, just different ways of doing it. CJ, what are you gonna put on your roof? Crackers. More crackers or the, the little cereals that I was eating earlier. Those were good, the cinnamon cereals. I'm putting crackers. All right, you're gonna put crackers? Scott, oh, that is cool. You're putting animal crackers on yours. I like that. <laughs> And when we get those all done, we can put a little bit more. Oh, don't worry about it. We got plenty more. As we see, I was taking the hardened fences over here, and what I did is I could just stick them right up in my snow, and I make sure that so they'll harden right there, and they're not going to go anywhere. This is still drying, so once it starts drying, make sure your pieces will sit correctly. And those are my little tops for it. So we just put on 
and I put an angle so I can see it different ways. This house is not going to have anything on the roof, and this one will. We can sit there and say, oh, little candies like this I can use as logs if I make a little stacking in case I have my wood stove. So this house has a fireplace, so I must have a wood stove or a fireplace so I can build my logs for that. Nice job with your... So what we do, this is why I put elastics on it so it doesn't squeeze out all over the place. There we go, now you can squeeze some more. Uh, after a little while, we'll add some stuff. Let's see, and I had uh, my snowman. See, and my snowman will go into the purple house right next to... Well, let's put my snowman by the front door. This is getting hard, Squirt. Like that. It's getting hard. I'll help you then, because sometimes two of us works better than one. All right. Squeeze. There we go. Now you can put the on that side. See all the different snowmen you can put there too. Wow, that is cool. I'm surprised. You guys are doing good. I didn't see anybody put any candy in their mouth yet, huh? That's because you guys are really good at what you're doing. So I'm going to finish my roof on this side. You can try something. See, and this is the fun part of it. And a lot of times I tell, you make some, you did. We make extra cookies so we can eat, so we're not putting the cookies that we make here in our mouth. And the candy is just working just for what it is. And then after a while, we have a nice healthy dinner, right? Because if we've eaten a lot of candy today, we have to have a healthy dinner later so we don't get belly aches. Good job. I'm going to put some of my red candies up here. See? Watch what I'm going to do up here. See? I can, there you go. You like that green color. Coconut, that's your mummy's favorite. And when, this is when I can come in and I can add a little bit of my, and we talked about snowdrifts, and I just come in like this after the kids can decorate. I took a bite of the coconut. Isn't it good? Yeah. I love coconut too. <gasps> Look, we have little tiny snowflakes. You like that one? I like that one too. I can put little snowflakes on my house and on my floor. That's okay, I'll clean that later. Those. You can have a whole bunch of those. I'll put a whole pile right next to you. And you can put them, look, you can even put them on little circles like that, like you're doing a good job there. So this is what it's all about. Kids, memories, they'll remember this forever, good, bad, or otherwise. They'll have a lot of fun with it. So this is why we do it for our friends, our family, and the love of cooking. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Be safe.